Hi, I'm Tracy Cardwell from LP Simonelli and your host for the Buffalo Public Schools program, Making It Happen. Right now, I'm standing in the school office of public school number 27, Hillary Park Elementary. This is a phase three school and it's slated to open the school year 2009-2010. This month, we have a great show in store. We are interviewing Darren Brown, who is a new principal over at Performing Arts. Uh, he gives us a great insight to his background, so I know you won't want to miss that. Also, we have something new. We have a minority business spotlight segment. And this month, we're spotlighting Lenny Johnson of l and Johnson Plumbing and Heating. And our last guest is Chris Jacobs, who is the Buffalo Public Schools board member along with the Joint School Construction Board member. Chris gave us great insight on the JSCB and all of their great efforts uh, in collaboration with LP Simonelli for the Buffalo Public Schools project. Don't forget any questions or comments you may have, please visit mih at lpseminelli.com. Leave your questions there and during our next month's show we will read the questions and answer them right on air. So thank you for tuning in. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm here with uh, Darren Brown. Darren is the new principal at the Buffalo Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts. Darren, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Uh, listen, tell us, you know, this is a new school for you. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give our viewers an insight of your background? Okay, um, a lot of background there is. <laughs> um, prior to arriving here at Buffalo Academy for Visual and Performing Arts, I was a principal at Community School 53, right down the street off of East Ferry on Roar, and I was there for approximately two years. And that was my first time um, working in an elementary school building, and I, I really, really enjoyed it, getting that principal experience, especially with the younger kids and the junior high. Um, prior to that, I was assistant principal at South Park High School for about two and a half years, and um, I enjoyed that tremendously, working with the high school students. Um, and before I worked at South Park High School, I was actually in corporate banking. Mm. I worked for HSBC. Um, I was an e-business analyst. I actually went through their, um, their management, management training program. And I was there for about two years. And prior to that, I was a math teacher at Sweet Home High School for four and a half years. And what allowed me to have so many different positions is my mom and my aunt always told me that education is something no one can ever take from you. Right. And I said, if I have a solid education, um, I don't have to stay in the job that either I don't like I might find boring or wasn't challenging enough. I wasn't, I don't feel that I was being fulfilled. And, um, but I must say when I was teaching at Sweet Home, I was very fulfilled, I enjoyed it a lot. But I always had a thought in the back of my mind um, because I always wanted to go into business. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, don't, I didn't have a business undergrad degree. My undergrad degree was in mathematics and I minored in physics. That's why I taught the math. But um, I decided to get my graduate degree in um, business management. So I received my MBA from Canisius College and I was accepted into the um, officer training program at HSBC. But while I was doing my MBA, I also thought to myself, um, I really enjoyed being in the educational field. Um, what about becoming an administrator? So while taking my MBA courses, I actually took coursework to get my certification to become a school administrator. And um, I did that. So when I was in the business world and I did get very bored, mm -hmm. I decided to go back into education and I um, was an assistant principal at South Park, South Park High School. And while working there, I had a phenomenal administrator. I worked with Paul Caseri, and um, he taught me how to be a great principal. Um, so I received my school administration certification, school district level certification, and um, I am now in the doctorate program at the University of Buffalo, the Educational Leadership and um, Policy doctorate wow. program at the University of Buffalo. Wow. And I'm enjoying that a lot also. Oh, that's great. You're just really busy. I am. you really, really busy. And what a great asset you are to uh, not only the Buffalo Public Schools, but, you know, to uh, the Performing Arts School. Very good. Very good. Listen, why don't you tell us what your goals are as new principal here? What are your goals for the students, you know, and the school overall? Um, for, for the students, I really want the students to focus on um, their, their academics mm -hmm. because students have to audition to come to the academy but I don't want them to think, okay, now I'm here, um, I'm just gonna be in music classes, singing classes, 
dancing classes all day long. Academics is so important. Very similar to students who play sports. They may be extremely talented if they don't have the SAT scores, if they don't have the grades, they're not going on to college. They're not going to get the scholarships. So I tell our students, okay, you're talented, now what? Mm -hmm. Make sure you have the academics to back that up so that you are able to go to any school you choose because you are talented. Have the academics to back it up because you're not just competing with students in Buffalo. You've already done that by being accepted here. You're competing with students nationally. Right. And that's what I try to get across to the faculty and students here. Yes, you know, we are performing arts, our students audition to get in. We have some of the top-notch students in Buffalo, but how are they ranking nationally? And that's why we have to really broaden our horizons and broaden the way we look at how the students now are being taught. And they're competing globally, not just locally anymore. That's they're competing right. globally. And they need to know that. And mm -hmm. the students here need to realize that academics are important but also they need to be great performers. They need right. to be great singers, dancers. Just getting by won't cut it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I go to New York frequently, as a matter of fact, and um, because I, I do enjoy the arts, I enjoy all the Broadway shows, but I can't tell you the number of restaurants I go to and everyone there, waiter, hostess, what have you, they are a struggling artist. Either you know they have the next audition coming up, they have the next interview coming up. So we have talented people and they'll be competing with talented people all across the U.S. so they need to be at the top of their game. So we're just trying to really really increase the rigor and increase the level of performance our students are capable of delivering here at the school. Okay. And we're doing that by bringing in people um, across the city who are well known right. in their field. Um, we have um, Lorna Hill who is now on staff here, the former executive director of Eugene Theatre Company. We have um, um, Many of our faculty members are top-notch and well-known. Right, absolutely, absolutely. I know Lauren Hill very well. Um, let, let's talk about those steps that, that you plan to uh, take, just a couple of the steps you plan to take to help the students academically, because as you said, you know, this is a performing arts school and everything is so concentrated on the arts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is very competitive for our students once they graduate, you know, we want them to have that paper to back them up. Right. Um, so what are just a few of the steps that you plan to take to help the students to reach, you know, that goal? Number one, we're going to be focusing on instruction. Mm -hmm. And our, our teachers know that our teachers are delivering um, phenomenal lessons in the classroom. But just really focusing on taking it just a step higher, not mm -hmm. higher. Focusing on getting the students here. Um, a lot of times, especially you get to the junior and senior level, our attendance isn't where it should be. But making the school inviting, letting students know that this should be the, their focus mm -hmm. all through high school, just making a place they want to come to. And we're doing that by just trying to change the atmosphere. You know, we had our first pep rally this year. The students enjoyed it immensely. And I, I try to make sure that we have things all students can do. Mm -hmm. So when students bring me something, Mr. Brown, can we do a Latin dance group? Sure. Can we do a hip-hop dance group? Sure. But with that, with me saying, yes, this is what I need from you. I need you to be here in school. I need you to do your homework. I need you to really focus in the classroom. So it's a give and take. I show them how I am backing them and willing to assist them and do anything they want. Mm -hmm. But in turn, they have to really assist me by being here, getting their grades up. And I tell them, I said, you know, leave it to me to really focus on that instruction. Our teachers are great and now we're ready and we're able to actually raise the bar. That's right, that's right. Okay, now you are in um, one of the state-of-the-art renovated schools. Yes. You know, yes. how do you like it, first of all? I Isn't love it. Isn't it awesome? I, it really, really is awesome. Yeah. And it gives the students just a different feel and just Absolutely. pride about their school. Absolutely, that, and, and that's my, with my next question. Do you feel that there is a link between top-notch schools mm -hmm. and students' performances? Definitely. Okay. And, and although I was not, um, I, I wasn't principal when they were in the old building on Clinton, mm -hmm. but the teachers, the administrators, Ms. Covington and Dr. Zarnecki explained to me that when they arrived in the new building, the students were, they were very proud of their school. They had less discipline occurrences because the students, they knew they were in a top-notch facility and that I guess they felt cared about right. and that they were, they were worth it. They yeah, truly were. Absolutely. We had students here um, for one of the shows, we did the Nutcracker mm -hmm. and students from School 53, where I was principal, they came down to see the show mm -hmm. and they loved the school. They mm -hmm. loved the school. And really showing the students of Buffalo, you know, what our school houses and what's here mm -hmm. really gets them to apply and a lot of, a lot of students want to come here. Okay. Okay. This is this is awesome. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I very really much. I'm and happy I'm happy for here. the performing arts school too because they have got a top notch, you Thank know, you. principal. Thank you know, you. only good good things, great things is going to come out of you and, and we're going to see great things come out of uh, this school. Yes. Any last words for our viewers? Um, last thoughts, lasting thoughts? Just support the arts and academics um, and we are here. So make